The Radium Podcast, episode 62. We got KDE on the beat and on a microphone without a pop filter. Yeah, I'm on like the other side of the world. That's how, like that's right how he rolls right now. Usually it's just like me and you uh, on the couch, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. watch the plosives, bro. I know. Right? It's all power. Well, I think if I like turn to the side right and talk. Yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's turn the... the capsule sideways. There you go. And today we got two very special guests. Uh, we got a producer, Shante, Miss Shante, right? So, However you want to say right? it. For it. Miss Shante. All right. I like Miss Shante. That's nice. So you you came from producing, engineering. Now you're doing um, like straight up like management. You got your own label now. Like she's, she's taking over the world, the music industry. Stay on your toes. <laughs> she's like, hell yeah. <laughs> she's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I am blushing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a, uh, let's see, we got multi-platinum engineer in the house zach Steele. i mean your credits are uh your list is pretty long and illustrious so you know it's like uh it's the la thing right like yeah man who you work with bro you go ahead drop some names oh god it's cooler if you do it okay okay all right <laughs> yeah, hype, all right. Hype it yeah up. he's like oh job. shit i hate talking about myself <laughs> engineers don't talk about themselves you ever notice that i did rappers are like yo i did this i got the bag i got this i got that I got well, the, the real producers. The real engineers don't talk about. Yeah, real so. engineers. Yeah. Facts. Facts. So it's Zach time for here. A change, yeah, we need to. We have to because yeah. truly, like, how are we ever going to get the damn credit on the? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like that shit's got to change. They're not giving sure. it to us on the streaming. So yeah. no master points. Like, title. come on, come on. Watch, I'm thinking, watch all the engineers buy chains now. Yeah. And, you know, like, <laughs> super flex on the gram. I've got my happen. new Honda. I've seen it happen. I'm not going to throw any names out there, but I did <laughs> see one engineer like go rock a diamond chain. Okay. I'm like, okay, new style. That's what's That's up. some flashy engineering mm. right there. Yeah, he, he's got weird. bands, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 just... Got the my new phone. tubes. <laughs> got new tubes in my microphone. Right? You just yeah. wear like a super dope tube on your neck. Wear a C800 around your neck. Just like 11K, homie. A golden one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Zach, you're you're um you've been doing this for a while. You got credits with um you know some really big names in the industry. Uh, Travis Scott is a pretty big name there. Kanye West. I mean, obviously, uh, Dua Lupe. Uh, that's how you say your name, right? Dua Lupe. Lipa. 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 Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's tongue twister. That was for like me. a mixture of a uh, Lupe a Fiasco <laughs> and Dua Lipa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah push uh, k- skateboard stuff, right? She yeah. does that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you've been around it. You've been in the game for a while now. Um, I mean, I'd love to hear some stories, obviously. But how long you been engineering? I have been engineering well. In high school, I didn't know I was engineering, but yeah, I was like facts. recording rappers and. <laughs> My own band and stuff. Nice. Um, I had no idea what mixing was. Like, oh, I yeah. thought, like, I was working with these rappers. They were like, okay, so you're going to mix it down now? I literally thought that just meant, like, bouncing it down. Yeah, right, right. It's like, there was no YouTube, so that tells you how long it's been. Yeah, you're um, old, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just kidding. I'm um, too. Actually, in the industry, I moved to Atlanta in 2008. Okay. And I did my first two internships there. So. Oh, sure, yeah. So what, what were the, any recognizable studios in Atlanta? Yeah, Tree Sound Studios yeah. and Doppler Studios. That's what's up. So you get you to work with like uh, some pretty big artists, like where you like start out the assistant, the intern, and then moved up a little bit or what? Uh, yeah, kind of like I did an entire internship and it was six months long. There was a couple times where I got thrown in on some sessions. Nice. Nothing too huge. I recorded uh, some like voiceovers for Greg Street. He's a big radio personality there. But it was time on Pro Tools. Yeah. And yeah. then... Um, Grinding it out. After that internship was over, I did another internship at Doppler Studios. And that's where I was like, all right, we're going to turn this one into yeah. assistant engineering yeah. and Facts. engineering. Yeah, you don't want to so. be doing the intern stuff too long. No, nah. you know, that shit's a hustle. <laughs> I mean, Kevin and I still do intern stuff, so we get it. You know, you own your own company, you do intern stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's dope, man. That's like that's like the old school, like straight up building relationships, being in the studio, working with the artists, working with the engineers, shaking hands, you know, making sounds. That that's uh that's almost like um a dying art form now. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. Now it's like, you know, kids are like, yo, I'm in my bedroom, I cooked up a record, and they get a gold record off of, like, you know, fucking around with some artists in their bedroom. So yeah. It's 
pretty wild. It's true. So, I still see it the other way, though. Yeah. The more traditional way. Like, I mean, even in L.A., I mean, the studios are a little harder to get into here. Right. I mm. think versus Atlanta. Yeah, but, it's like a uh, secret club. Yeah, and I mm. feel like the internships programs here last way longer than mm. it's like six months. Like, yep. I, I mean, I know interns that have been doing it for like they're like two years in, and Fact. they're yeah. still interns. It's like, yep. okay, why are you still an intern? It's two are they years like runners? At, yeah, at like that runners, point, okay. runners. Yeah. yeah, I guess runners. is There's the like precursor. levels of interns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there definitely are. Like, LA, LA is crazy with this shit. You know, yeah. I mean, there's really like an underground um, economy. You know, because it's like the studios and the music and it's all like paid on back end. And it's like, dude, I can't pay you. And the kids are like, oh, that's cool. I'll just keep doing it because I want to learn, you know, or it's either that or what? Go to a recording school and pay a hundred thousand dollars and well, come out with you go, probably both. Right. Yeah. You go to a recording school first and then you it's get crazy. your your internship. I mean, um, in L.A., I know they do pay only because it's illegal not to. Right. Facts. Um, but I mean, they're not paying a lot. Mm-hmm. But they do pay I like mean, stipends the, and shit. Yeah, well, they pay hourly. Oh wow! And at least from my experience, I don't know if Zach, you can. Like, no, I think confirm that's true. That. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, as far as the learning process, I mean, that depends on what studio you're at. Right. Because you could right. totally be like doing an internship. Yeah. But you're just running the whole time. Getting and tacos for you people want to learn, <laughs> but there's really no opportunity to do that. I know a lot of studios are like that. Yeah. Um, here then there's the studios that like if you have a mentor mm-hmm. like I got lucky and had a mentor and he pulled me in and it was a one on one situation where he was teaching me things and showing That's me dope. so mm-hmm. if you get lucky I think people should look for that yeah. more so than an internship yeah more the opportunity rather right. than like you know the big studio right yeah we we have guys here that you know that's I think the mentality that they had as well mm-hmm. when they came in because they had gone to these big studios and they're like, dude, I was a runner. I got the wrong order for some guy. And they were like, get out of here. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I did this for like <laughs> six months. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. you know, just running around, grabbing people coffees and blunts yeah. and shit, you know? So, and you don't really, you're not really learning anything. Yeah. Like, except for like how to take an amazing order. And get yeah. right. <laughs> but exactly. you're proving yourself too. Like, That's true. If you can't get the coffee right and if you don't get the right sauce from Chick-fil-A and stuff like that, then... I'm definitely not going to trust you with like recording an artist yeah, or setting up a microphone. Yeah. I think, I think that's actually uh, something <laughs> I think that's really highly overlooked because engineering and running sessions is so detail oriented and uh, you'd never know it until you're pretty deep in the game. You know, you're comping on the fly, you're paying attention to everything. Um, the, the sibilance and the voice, the way the pitch, the the timing, everything. And, and so many patch points and gear that could go wrong. And, you know, if someone can't get the sauce for the, for the right sandwich, it's like, how are you going to pay attention to whether the compressor's over-compressing or not, you know? That's true. It's a service job. Like, yeah, engineer, facts. we service the artist or whoever whoever's out there, you know what I mean? And, and, like, people can't forget that. So the bare minimum of service is like, yeah, can you get the order right and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. You have to really humble yourself to be, like, an engineer because – we're not like top of the food chain right <laughs> like bottom of the food chain yeah. for sure should be top of the food chain though because if it's not for the these engineers and yeah. these records wouldn't sound the way that they sound <laughs> amen Bam. at all amen <laughs> so so you've done some engineering yourself shante yeah a lot yeah okay yeah. Yeah, so you were you were like mainly like doing a lot of recording session running kind yeah. of stuff i mean i've been i've been a runner i've been an yeah. intern i've done i've assisted engineered i wow. reco- wasn't a recording engineer and yeah i've seen the whole like i've seen the whole ladder that's crazy we got Um, a bunch of engineers in the room then yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) but i started out in philly oh so my first two internships were at studios in philadelphia one Mm -hmm. at larry gold studio and then with dre and vidal right after that and you know both great experiences i got my first like i guess you could say look as an engineer Mm -hmm. Um, working on Anthony Hamilton's record. Dub, love him. Yeah, oh, he's so amazing. Sick. Amazing. Yeah, that, that, we need, that we need shit. more music, Anthony. Yeah, dude. If facts. you see this. <laughs> yeah, where, where's it? Where's that next record? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and then from there, um, I was still producing at that mm-hmm. time. I was working more so with like local artists in Philly nice. at that time, 
Then I left Philly and went to Atlanta. I wasn't doing too much there, but that's where I met Zach. Nice, yeah. And we've been friends ever since. That's dope. <laughs> that's super dope. Was that yeah. like a like a same studio or a session or what was the? Honestly, I hit him up on Twitter. Nice. Because I was looking to just you know I didn't know anyone in Atlanta mm-hmm. and I just wanted to connect with some people in the business mm-hmm. and just a sit in right. Yeah, yeah, sit in and just that's figure dope. out like what you know what I wanted to do, where my place was mm-hmm. going to be, whether it's going to be an engineer, a producer, or a songwriter. Right. Or all three yeah and uh he was just like yeah come to the studio and i pulled up at this house in atlanta <laughs> and i'm like right. this isn't a studio right, right. and he's like come inside and it's like a studio house oh, so that was my best. first experience i think you were working with trey at the time yeah. uh trey songs and then i just watched him and just followed yeah. him everywhere that's fucking tight so yeah. so like that that's a good um i kind of want to riff on that a little bit because uh there's a lot of um, up and coming engineers, producers. I mean, we're in Los Angeles, you know, Hollywood, middle of it all. And, um, you know, in Atlanta as well, uh, New York back in the days. I don't yeah. know how much New York's really like on in the in the recording studio, making record scene anymore. But um, like, I want you to speak a little on that, both of you guys, because that's, that's a really interesting story because um, how do you reach out to people? What's What are like some good guidelines that you would give about, that whole thing because most of the time you know you're gonna get that like kevin will get that a lot i'll get that a lot you know dms or bro i want to sit in i want to come through Mm. you know like how do you decide like like who you're gonna do that with yeah and like am i why like i'm gonna give the shante uh girl a chance (laughs) like you know what i mean yeah it's a good question because honestly like most of those messages are just they come across as really inorganic right and overly networky and totally. like, so um i can't really say what it was about shante that made me you know decide to, the to link up she got the finesse <laughs> <laughs> she's she's good at that yeah um but i will say like my advice um to anybody that's up and coming is mm-hmm. to just try to be as organic as possible and build relationships with people first before you try to get something from them as as like as far as sitting in or any knowledge or especially trying to get work or anything like that it's just (laughs) just be a person and you know try to get in the mix and Mm -hmm. you know rub shoulders and talk to people and the internet is a great tool instagram twitter opened up a lot for sure go to events hang out with people meet people but there's like there's um so just for instance there's a producer that uh i've been like i've known him for maybe a couple years now on instagram never met him but you know he comments on my stuff i comment on his like it's kind of like a friendship at this point and he he lives in um, texas and he just hit me oh i'm gonna be in la next month let's get a drink or something like that it's like cool like because you're like a a real person to me not just somebody that wants to leech value from me facts Mm -hmm. that's a good point I think uh, that the relationship thing, even on the internet, is really important. Like, it's a slow process. It's a slow burn. I mean, Shante, we linked on Instagram, you know, just like going back and forth. Um, you know, I was talking to you on it, on DMs and stuff. And and I think that's, that's a really good starting point is just like liking people's stuff, like getting involved. If you don't fuck with them at all anyway, like don't ask them for shit. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah. You know? I mean, that engagement has to be organic. Right. And people can fill that out. Like, you know where people like are coming from if they really yeah. want, like how they word certain things. Like you kind of are like, okay, you just want this. Yeah. You don't really want You're just wanna, looking to get put on. Yeah, yeah. you just want to get put on. <laughs> But even as someone who's looking to network, make sure that you're reaching out to people that that can actually like teach you something. Right. You know, someone that has some accolades. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I was following Zach back Twitter days. I don't know how popular Twitter is. I'm not on there anymore. Right. But I mean, this was a long, long time ago when Twitter was huge. Donald Trump brought it back. Mm. Yeah, yeah Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Obama made it okay, then Trump, you know. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Like... Let's give that to Obama. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 but uh but no, like just I you know, I found the people that were in the areas that I wanted to be in. Like mm. I, he was working with the artists that I wanted to work with. Gotcha, yeah. You know, he had the credits that you know the type of credits that i wanted to to have as well Mm -hmm. so making sure you're reaching out to people 
that are in the spaces that you want to be in yeah, and that can actually teach point. you some things and have the knowledge and the history and the experience. Mm -hmm. You don't want to reach out to someone who's like in the same boat that you're in. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> like like okay, well what are you going to what are you going to show mm -hmm. me? Like the goal is to always reach out to people that you feel could be a mentor to you. Mm. And most of those mentors have incredible amounts of experience. Right. So yeah. So I mean like, you know, going on that though, um you know, how do you reach out to a mentor? You know what I'm saying? Because like for a lot of people, I mean, you know, just human nature, it's like, yo, you're above me. Like you're doing shit I want to do. Like, how did you reach out to Zach? And like, what was that thing? You know what I mean? I just asked. Yeah, just asked, right? Like, yeah. Like even with, okay, even recent. So Jean-Marie Horvat, mm -hmm. who's an amazing mix engineer, legendary mm -hmm. mix engineer, who is a recent mentor of mine. And I do encourage like have multiple mentors. Yeah. Facts. Like, yeah throughout because different stages of your career you're mm -hmm. going to need different mentors yeah. and just you know build relationships with relationships with everybody mm -hmm. but anyway jean-marie it's the same thing with him mm -hmm. i just reached out to him via instagram yeah. i dm'd him i think while i was still in was i still in school yeah i might i might have still been in school and then he forwarded me on to someone else nice. he probably does not remember this yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> he forwarded me to someone else paul foley hi paul He's who's also like a legend in his mm -hmm. own right. And me and Paul were emailing. He probably doesn't remember this either. But I got the I got the receipts. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> and and then from there, you know, later on I reached out to Jean Marie again mm -hmm. and just like, Hey, are you looking for an assistant? And right. at that time he was like, Actually I am. That's tight. And then I went to the studio and we met up, we just vibe, we clicked and I ended up being his assistant for a short period of time. And he's still mm -hmm. a good mentor of mine. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess just ask, you know, everybody yeah. just ask. I, I think that's important. Yeah. You know, um, but those mouths don't get fed. Yeah. Facts. And I think, uh, you know, putting those things, those two ideas together is really powerful. You know, uh, building the relationship, talking to people, liking their stuff, uh, going and finding people that are, you know, reach, reach above you, not sideways or down. I think that's always a really good principle. Especially like, you know, uh, you get people that just see that you're in music, you're in a studio and they start reaching out to you and you're like, dude, you make like, like trap ass music. And I, you know, I, I, that's not what I'm known for. You know, why are you hitting me up? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like you got to find people that you resonate with, that you would want to work with, that you want to like, Hey, I want to do what you're doing. I would love to be a part of what you're doing. Um, and get those credits. Like, I think that was a really, that's a really good point. Um, even Kev, like you, you have stories about how you, uh, you know, 16 years old, um, going about, you know, networking and finding people like your manager, yeah. right? That got you uh, plugged up. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all about, uh, you know, value add and, and like you said, authenticity and right. talking to people, you know, as human beings. And uh, yeah. And also like, just like putting yourself out there, like she said. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. It's like that, uh, that, that powerful uh, magic potion, you know what I mean? But uh, it definitely takes a, a personality because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really want to be stuck in the studio with someone I don't, I don't really fuck with, you know. That's really hard because these aren't big rooms. Even in a big studio, it's not a big room. I feel like you have to have all the attributes, though, because if, mm. if you really like someone, but they don't get, you know, the things done, you can't have them around either. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the homies. No matter how hard you try, you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, that's what I was going to add, too, when, uh, when approaching potential mentors, you know, Make sure you do add value yeah. to their life. Like, um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be doing things for free, although that is like right. <laughs> really kind of nice. Yeah. Like uh, a lot of my mentors, I would come in and assist them. You know, if they didn't have an assistant on a session, I would come yeah. assist them. Or even just making sure to tell them like anything you need, like around the studio, I'll do it. Let me know. Just showing them that you're about that life. Yeah, totally. You know, get your hands dirty. Yeah, that, that's a big thing. I mean, I got my start that way. Really, is like just going in and being like, "Yo, I'm down to do whatever. You want me to like redo your console and your patch bay? I'll do it. You know, like I'll redo your whole studio if you need me to. You know, I'll get dirty. I'll uh, build bass traps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like whatever it takes. Solder some cables. I think yeah. I did yeah. that. <laughs> get the soldering gun out. Like yeah. let's do this. You know. But um, yeah, that's crazy because uh, the engineering game is like, it's just all over the uh, all over the place now, and um, I think that there's still like this massive place for, 
you know, really high quality studio environments, listening environments. And um, I think that that gets really undervalued. A lot of people are like, oh, you got a computer, you got a studio. And I just don't really believe that. (laughs) I truly don't believe that. Um, But that's just because I'm starting to see, and I don't know if you guys can speak on this a little further, but I'm starting to see the divide happen a lot more, just like in classism. It's like, you know, you start getting uh, the kids like got the computer, like, and then you got like the top studio stuff and it's going like this more. And it used to be like, it had a moment where it was kind of like leveling out and now it's like going like this again. So it's really interesting because records are starting to sound ridiculously good. Yeah. And uh, we had a time there where a few years where it was just like people could just not give a shit about what it sounded like. It was like, it was, you'd go to Apple Music and you're like, holy, dude, this is hell. Well, what time period are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about like five years ago when people were just dropping whatever. 2014? Yeah, like that 2010 kind of vibe where it was just like, they like would the just SoundCloud drop. era. Yeah, the SoundCloud. Okay. You know, that was only a couple. Years. That was like two, three years ago. Yeah, but that 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 time period was like. I, mean, I still hear it. I was, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, still hear it. Yeah. 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 yeah, facts. But, but that was like, a big deal. Like all, it, that was causing a lot of the major studios to close because mm. most people were just doing it from home or right. doing it in their bedroom or, or whatever. Well, yeah, I so, think the um the the necessity for large multi track recording like bands and stuff like that that has like gone down completely and it may come back I, i'd love to see like real instrumentation and like putting a band and tracking them all at once that'd be sick for that all that to come yeah. back but you know, I, I think that it's it's, it's a free loops now <laughs> right but it's very uh that's already that's always been there you know you're talking about uh massive studios you're talking about sony sony lot and paramount yeah and paramount fox you know all these places that are doing big Capital. studio productions yeah. they're not going to get rid of the orchestra anytime soon you know we did have a little bit of that in the film tv sort of thing where it was like everything's electronic but now it's going yeah. back to yo, we need organic stuff and uh, now those big studios are also being used to just track really great sample libraries mm-hmm. you know so that stuff uh, has kind of opened up a whole nother economy for it is like you know even the trap producers, they're like, yo, we need horn samples and crazy cool shit from, you know, that sounds organic and, okay, output is doing stuff. Make us some loops. Yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah. You know, A and splice. And, and, yeah. yeah, so I, I think that that stuff's really important still. Uh, a nice room, a good recording environment. And how much of that stuff have you done? Like, you do a lot of that stuff or just mainly uh, vocalists and singing, rapping? Like, what do you got going on? Um... It is 90% of the time vocalists. Gotcha. Uh, this year I did work with a really cool band from New York called nice. Phony People. Oh, yeah. And uh, we did that at Chalice here in Hollywood. And we did drums and guitar and keys and horns, like so many horns. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was yeah. like nonstop vibes. For, a, lot of, a lot of ribbon mics. Yeah, every every mic. Yeah, <laughs> every mic possible. Yeah. Every, every mic, mic in closet and every out. channel yeah. on the board. That's, that's but dope. um, so yeah, and that was really fun, and like it kind of reinvigorated my like yeah. passion. Dude, when so, you're like going deep, yeah, you know, you're like, man, we got to get that kick drum sound. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, those sessions are a lot slower, I think, in my opinion. Like that's what I like about them. Like they're pace wise, pace wise. Yeah. When you're working with vocalists, is like now, 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 now. Yeah, put yeah. me in record. Put me in record. <laughs> yeah, and those guys were so cool too. It was just like they would be like coming up with chord ideas on the roads, and then all of a sudden the drummer just runs in. That's and it's so like, fun. So now we're just doing a whole new song, and you're just on the jumping fly. in, like, okay, shit, that sounds yeah. dope. Yeah, like yeah. should I tell them I need them to stop for a second? Yeah. Or like, <laughs> just no, go. let's just go. That's so, fun. That's fun, man. That's that brings the magic back into uh into the recording process for sure. So like uh as far as like vocalists go, you just have your your vocal chain set up already, ready to go. Yeah, I have a template. It's it's pretty simple mm-hmm. and then um you know, depending on the what who the vocalist is, mm-hmm. I'll choose a different mic, but it's it's pretty standard setup with everyone yeah. these days, you know, it's like yeah. I'm not really giving anything away right here. I was going to say, like, give me like your Everybody uses a like, C-800. Give us your vocal yeah, right, right. CL-1B. CL-1B. Got, B, yeah, the Neve 1073. Boom, that's it. Oh. So. Isn't, that, isn't that funny? It's like, it's such a standard now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I like to switch it up now and use yeah. like a different compressor. or But that, that compressor is just so easy to get the right sound. Damn. Versatility, like man. Yeah. It's hard to beat that thing. 
It is. Yeah. It's definitely a, a Swiss Army knife for sure. Do you uh, do you fuck with the uh, the UAD stuff? I do. Yeah. Heavily, you know. It makes life it makes life a little easier, I doesn't just it? I feel like it sounds just sonically sounds so good. way better. Yeah. I mean, but I, that's also like you know, just an opinion because you, you you don't too much, do you? I mean, I like outboard gear, um, right. but yeah, if you don't have <laughs> if you don't have it, <laughs> right. then you know that's I think right. the UAD has got some of the best like modeling of yeah. vintage gear. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> if you don't have a a massive studio with hundreds of thousands of dollars in gear, you know. But yeah, so I I, I like using other people's gear. Yeah, <laughs> way better, way yeah. better with, with their own in-house tech. And yeah. yeah, you guys pay the bills for it. Yeah. yeah. You come in and uh, do a session. That's always fun. But uh, yeah, every studio is different. Setup different. Patch bay is different. You know, they all have their little tricks and their their things, their quirks. You got to work out. But uh, you typically have like an assistant at most of those places, yeah. So like, yeah, man, I'm just gonna do that for you. Couple you're assistants like, if you're doing big band stuff, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or one really good one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, one Superman. <laughs> one killer, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So shout out to all the assistants, yeah, by facts. the way. Yeah. Like we love you guys. Shout out to the assistants. Let's uh, let's break editors. down their assistants' job. Like what what yeah. do they get their hands in? Saving the world. <laughs> saving the world. <laughs> saving everybody's lives. Troubleshooting masters. Mm -hmm. For real. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything goes wrong in that studio, they're the ones that's going to fix it. Sweating bullets. Yeah. I think you have to be uh, like a little bit of a psychologist too. You kind of have to know what you know, whoever you're <laughs> seconding for what they want <laughs> yeah before they ask for it <laughs> yeah making making the engineer's life easier yeah um and definitely catering to the client too yeah absolutely but yeah we have we have guys here like you know without them you're you're doing all the edits and the cuts and the you know melodining vocal lining all that stuff it's like that's that's a lifesaver right there so definitely shouts but uh, yeah, let's get into a little bit more of the, because, um, you know, the creative stuff is really cool, but I think, like, that's so, like, open and on the internet now. Like, yeah, you want a you t tutorial? Like, I mean, we have mixwiththemasters.com, like, literally yeah. the biggest guys. Like, you should have your own thing, too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's coming. Yeah, good. Uh -huh. good. Oh, yeah, we could definitely, like, okay, so yeah, since let, we're bringing it let's up. Let's hear about it. It's definitely. Let's hear, it. <laughs> let's hear it. Break the news. Rating podcast. Bring it on. So, Zach is going to be having a webinar soon and it is for up and coming engineers Love producers it. writers anyone that wants to get into business but definitely for engineers and it's he's going to be speaking more so on the practical side nice of engineering because like you said we have all those videos out there right. you know how, you know how to, uh, how how to, to look for how mud to, in the you know, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like you how know EQ how to vocals. eq vocals, right you know vocal chains all this that stuff is great and that information mm -hmm. obviously is needed yeah. but we feel like people really need to know the real deal like mm. behind the scenes of the music industry yeah. what what it takes to be successful yeah in the industry as an engineer producer or, or whatever you're pursuing mm -hmm. and and what that looks like yeah. you know so we got the real the real deal stories coming that's what's up real soon real that sounds soon. dope so mm -hmm. you guys have a date lined up yet we don't have a date lined up yet we did partner with isotope so they're Sick. they're in on it as well there is going to be a, a promo package available from nice. isotope for the people that for the people that attend nice. uh, so just you know I'll, I'll be there for sure <laughs> follow us on our instagram pages because we will be promoting it very soon dope. very soon yeah, and we'll we'll shout that out at the end here. But um that's really dope. Like, you know, just that whole environment right now that the internet's created, I think um, you know, my best advice is to pay for the to get around it, to get the access. You know, a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't give a shit, everything's free, but it's like, dude, those <laughs> YouTube tutorials, man, that guy doesn't actually mix records, you know what I mean? Yeah, those like he I sells mean, tutorials. <laughs> right, like he's exactly. trying to get some advertising money on <laughs> YouTube. Internet marketing. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Like the whole new industry of like internet marketing and stuff is just nuts. But um But it's a shame though because the people that are aspiring to do what Zach does, mm -hmm. they're watching those YouTube right. videos and, and then they're like, teaching it too. I'm going to be <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my favorite right. part about it. It's right. like right. I'll watch this as a tutorial now I'm going to go or sell some I'll, tutorials. Maybe I'll be a multi-platinum engineer if I just watch this tutorial. It's, and crazy. it's like no, actually that's not that's not <laughs> how it works. But you know, like that's good. I mean, I, 
you know, the reason Kevin and I wanted to do a podcast, just like put all that shit on blast because it's, it's unbelievable. It's all over the internet and, you know, the music business stuff, there's just like, everybody's got some sort of little, you know, clip on their Instagram, three strategies for music business success, <laughs> you know, and they're like running ads and shit on them. And I'm like, dude, who is this kid? Like, I don't know what is going on right now. Successful marketer. That's, yeah. yeah. It's like, I think with music production mm. is the most saturated in that area Dude. that I've seen. How to make beats like Travis Scott. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> How to make, <laughs> and like without, without like taking shots at any specific one, but they're all just yeah. like, I don't see them as successful music producers. Right. I see or them teachers, as you know? music marketers. Yeah. Marketers even. Right. Or, or, YouTube marketers, they like they figured out how YouTubers. to sell their their service, their brand. Yeah. You know, like that is the brand is like they're um they're definitely like these uh, internet educators or something. I don't know what it is. I'm not, you know. There's good people out there though, like Pensado. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah Pensado. Yeah, yeah. Pensado's like, also actually in the music yeah. business. Yeah. <laughs> like you look his credits up, you're like, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, like that. He's that a dude, legend. He's and the a random legend. ones have like good info too, but you just have to take those guys with a grain of salt. Right, like, which sucks because yeah. that's the problem, right? Is that you have these kids that, or I'm not even gonna say kids, anyone that's not really experienced, hasn't been in the studio, et cetera, and they're watching these things and they're just getting this information that's like... Oh, I saw... I, I, you want you want you an example? Yeah. I saw a guy say that the 1176 wasn't fast enough for drums and you need to use an SSL. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because the SSL You just need to, faster. because that's the way it works, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's, that's the stuff that it's like, what? You know, where did you get these ideas from, you know? And they probably watched a YouTuber, you know, telling them about that shit, so... That's the part that I don't like, and uh, I get it. It's like become good at marketing, be a YouTuber, talk about what you know you want to talk about. But like, if you're not living it, it's kind of and it's it's so much fucking people over, you know? Right, that part. Yeah, it's so much more to it also than just being a creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yes, you're giving them like technical information that could be good or not good. Right, but you also got to know the business. Yes. And no one's teaching that. I mean, yeah, right. That's, Number one. That's first and foremost. So you can watch as many YouTube videos as you want, but if you don't know the business, then you're still not, you're still not going to be successful. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of. Uh, I think the hard part about the music business, music industry, is that there's a lot of gray space there. You know, because every deal's different. What's mm -hmm. publishing? What's what and even PROs? that? <laughs> even that? It's like it doesn't even that's matter. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole like college that's series. A, like, well, that's why we're on episode sixty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we finally made it to what publishing is. <laughs> Through sixty-two episodes, we've explained little bits and pieces masters. of publishing. We're, we're owning masters, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, but but that's the hard part is the gray areas, you know, um, and the laws changing every year, and um, the new acts coming through. And I mean, the way that we actually even sell music or the product, the service, et cetera, it's like, it's just so gray that people are like, there's no like absolutes. It's like, yes and no on everything because every deal's so different. If you're an artist, if you're a producer, if you're you know, what's independent anymore. And I think that's where the confusion comes in. And I think that that's where the business likes it we like it skewed so that people can man maneuver a lot more you know so there's no like well this is how it is this is by the books mm -hmm. we'll give you three mass points on the some, master uh, that's how levels. we do it that's that, <laughs> that's the norm so there's no fucking norms anymore you know so i think that that's the part that um that yeah maybe the executives and people making money in the industry really love because they can they can play around with it you know they can turn the knobs but others, it's like it's hard to teach, I guess, is the best. You can teach the foundation of it. The foundation, you yeah. You can teach business. Right. I mean, if you know business, you pretty much right. have a really good foundation. If you know music business, mm. you have a foundation of it, an right. understanding of publishing, an understanding of right. what your rights are as a, a songwriter mm -hmm. or a producer or even as an engineer. Like those are things that, yeah, you should know that. You should right. seek that type of information. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. Those contracts... It is it's different for everybody. That's why it's so hard. It's like you get what you your, your rights, you know, it's like what, you know, for me, I feel like when 
because I hear this all the time on the internet. That's like the the biggest thing that's talked about. Your rights as a producer, your rights as an artist, creative, creating the art, creating the product. It's like, but what if you reused a melody from someone else? What if you interpolated a melody? What if these kids making trap beats like actually took a loop from someone else? What if they used Spectre Sonic's Omnisphere and selling a loop kit where Spectre Sonic's Omnisphere in their user agreement says you cannot sell our stuff that way? You know what I mean? And uh, there's so much information there that like is just lost in the abyss. And then it's like, what are your rights if it's not even your work, you know? So it's just really hard. Um, and, and we just want to be creative when we're in producer mode or we're in, you know, engineer mode or we're just trying to write a song, get in right. the studio. But you got to know the business, though. I mean, you can be <laughs> creative all day, but you don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. You don't, don't let your creativity, you know, lead you to a lawsuit. Yeah, facts. You know. That kills so many careers. It does. Mm -hmm. Before they even start. Like, yeah. Kids that get a good song going and they pop off with a song and then they think that's it for them. And then they're like, yo, I'm not getting in my publishing. Like, I don't get any of that. Yeah. Wait, where's my checks at? Oh, artists <laughs> get shelved for, you know, all sorts of reasons behind the scenes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Start making bad moves. It's crazy. So, I mean, I, I think that the business... Uh, hopefully in the next few years is like going to get more structured, you know, like where we do have some definites. Um, but other than that, it's just like a, it's a wild west thing. Well, the, the definites now are don't take other people's music without permission. Right. That's a, <laughs> that's a definite, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, owning your, owning your, well, first of all, when you create anything, you already own the rights to the, to your mm. music. Unless you do a deal with someone where you're giving those rights away, which I do not encourage that. Work for hire. Yeah. But it, depending on the situation, it could be a good situation for you right. to do that. It just, like you said, I mean, it's different for everybody. Yeah. You get what you negotiate. That's a real thing. You know, someone going into a publishing deal. Um, I know a girl who's, <clears throat> her publishing deal um, with Universal was for over a hundred grand. And then mm -hmm. I know a guy who's, was only 40 grand and it's right. like well what what are you giving up what is she versus what is she giving up right you know what are the terms of the contract you just you just never know but you have to be you got to know your business in order to go into those rooms to be able to negotiate what you want yeah so how much i mean you're helping zach out right is that zach the, is a partner of mine you, yeah. zach's partner so you guys are kind of working together on the uh the creative and the business kind of yeah right splitting yeah. the How's that? How's that for you, Zach? Like, how did? I mean, like, going from being an engineer. I mean, do you produce as well? I do. I mean, right. So yeah. you're like in the studio, and mm -hmm. you might even be doing vocal production mm -hmm. and writing, right? Yeah, definitely. Right. So, um, so like, you know, I think this is a really good thing for uh, people to hear from people doing this every day. You know, um, but you know, how many times? you know, with labels, et cetera, you get in sessions and they don't even have any idea up front about splits. They're not talking to you about it. And then later they hit you up and go, yo, so you good with fill in the blank? Like, yeah, I think um, that's why it's important to educate yourself beforehand. Right. Uh, for instance, I, I had a client that I was, uh, you know, booked to engineer the session and I ended up like, co-producing because I, I made this whole breakdown with like news clips right. and like we recreated the news clips with a with like a voiceover oh, shit, yeah. artist so it wouldn't be like actual you know celebrity uh right. or you got to get it clear so yeah so we didn't have to get it cleared basically mm -hmm. and i i know going into that that i'm entitled to you know co-production facts so um i didn't have any problem like telling the a and r Right. You know, like right. when when things start moving on this record, yeah. you know, like let's start negotiating. Yeah, we got to get something together. So, right? um, whereas if if you don't know anything about that, like you might be doing things on a, on a record as an engineer, and you're actually producing, mm. and you don't even know, or you like you don't realize that you can ask for things, or you're scared to ask mm. for your put your opinion out there. Yeah, you yeah. might be scared because you didn't educate yourself. Right. So, you know, with a little bit of knowledge, then you have, like, the confidence to ask for what you're owed. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. And uh, also, like, big question for you, uh, Zach, and, um, and Shante as well, you know. Uh, 
how many times do you engineer a project, mix it, master it, whatever it is, like in whatever capacity and ask for some of the publishing or master points or whatever on it? Um, it's very rare. Hmm. I will say that. Um, usually, well, especially when you're working with more high profile clients, right. they already have their producer and their executive producer and right. like everything is set in stone and you're there to do your job. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you do work that is production, you're entitled to that or even writing or whatever you should right. ask for. Um, you should ask for what you do. Right. Um, it happens more with like a, the the more up and coming artists. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can wear more hats. You know, they're Facts. not gonna like if you like flip the beat and make a bridge at the end. Yeah, like, yeah. And, like <laughs> trying to make gonna, it more interesting. For yeah, them, they're not gonna out. like flip out on you or something. Bro, you why'd know? you do that? Now I gotta give you some writing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. How about you, Shantae? You get in the studio. That happened to you. Um, not so much. Like mm. he's like like he said. I mean, if you're an engineer, you're there to do your engineering right. job. But if you're in a space where you start to produce, mm. then yeah, you just, like he said, you just gotta know. Right. Like okay, this is what a producer gets on the record. Right. This is what I did. This is what I feel like I'm owed percentage wise. Mm. And then it's good to handle those splits. Um, after the session's over, right. at least between the people that are involved in the creative process of that yeah. before it gets to the A&R so that you guys are all cool. It's like, all right, I helped you with this. Um, is 10% cool? Right. Are you cool with that? And he agrees. You get it in writing. Mm. You know, there's, that's why you have split sheets. Yeah, don't bring it up in the middle of the session. Don't bring it up yeah, in the middle of the session ever. or before the Everyone's session. Like, before the session. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the producer or the writer will, like, as an engineer, sometimes I've tossed out lyrics, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah, trying yeah. to help out. And the, and the writer will be like, ah, you trying to get 5%. I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that happens a lot in the, uh, I mean, because, you know, my background was really like uh, when I first came to L.A., it was a lot of film score, you know. So it was uh, like big movies and like you're in the session and, you know, it's just so gray. And then like, oh, you want to change that? No, we're not changing any lyrics. We're not changing anything. You know what I mean? Like sing that exactly how it's saying in the temp that I hummed. You know what I mean? So when the when the actual singer comes in to cut like a demo or whatever, it's like, uh, you know, they'll try and do stuff. And the composer's like, no, no, do it like that. Exactly. Like go to the A flat there. Don't, don't hit that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, everything. Let's, let's stick to the one that I wrote. Super, yeah. Yeah. It's charted. You know what yeah. I mean? There's lead sheets. Like the, the pop world and making records is so different. And it's like, yeah, let's get in. Let's just vibe. Let's just cook. Let's just make some music. Mm -hmm. And uh, the film world is like, uh, yeah, you see that thing in front of you? Follow yeah. that. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> yeah, there's the lyrics too. Don't fuck with anything, you know. So. You got union, like yeah, union right, right. Hey, hey, we're not starting yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People ain't doing anything. They're like, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That shit's nuts. But yeah, so I, I just always wondered about that stuff with um, you know, you getting in the studio with a big artist. You know, you're not at your home studio. You're not at your studio studio your business and your you know being you're engineering a project and you get in with someone like uh travis or someone like you know do a lipe and mm -hmm. and and you're like <laughs> do, a, do a lipa there do a you lipa. go yeah. i'm gonna get this i'm sorry i'm sorry do a lipa um but you know <laughs> i think like when you get in uh into those situations they're probably it, it probably has a lot to do with the label as well right and the a and r on the project like them being in the room and deciding like yo you're the engineer we make this deal with you it's more of like a professional yeah facts. setup but i will say if if you have like a long-standing relationship with an artist no matter how big they are right. you know if you know that like if you're going to that person's birthday parties and stuff <laughs> like, you <laughs> right, could right. probably like i know you for 13 help years. out with some yeah. lyrics if they're yeah. like you know struggling Just a little stuck there yeah yeah thanks so, yeah, I, that's also like a, a big question is, is, you know, talking about standards and um, sort of, you know, norms, like what are the norms for uh, Shante? This is really a question for you, I guess. But, um, 
you know, what are the norms for points on master uh, publishing, et cetera, when you're, you know, producing a record with someone or you're in the studio with someone like say Kevin makes the beat, gets in the studio with the artist and, and, you know, let's say it is someone like Travis, you know, what are those typical points for, um, for the producer? Going into any situation if you're uh, writing a song, so your song is 100%, mm-hmm. right? 50% goes to the songwriter, mm-hmm. the other 50% goes to the producer. So automatically, you're entitled to 50% of the song. There's two portions of that song, though. There's your so- the songwriting side, mm-hmm. which is songwriter and producer, and then there's the publishing side, which right. is the songwriter's publisher and the producer's publisher. Mm-hmm. If you're self-published, good for you. Right. <laughs> if you're not... Then, you know, uh, let's say, we'll say Universal, for example, mm-hmm. um, would tap into only the publishing side of of that equation, right. not the production side. But as a producer, yeah, 50%. I mean, depending on if the record's going to be a single or not, mm-hmm. then you, nego- you can negotiate those points. Gotcha. If you're starting out, you know, a point. Right. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> pretty not, good, yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> For a big artist, right? You're not really seeing too much of the point system as much as you used to because mechanicals aren't calculated how they used to be because we don't sell CDs anymore. Right. And mechanical royalties are based off of Streams. album sales. Right. So now it's all streaming. Mm. So you don't really see too much of the points, but the publishing, yeah, you still, you still should be getting your publishing now. If you're the only producer on the project, Mm. it's 50%. If you're if you're working with another producer, you guys are collaborating, mm. then you should, I mean, if it's an equal split, it should be 25-25 yeah. or whatever you guys decide to so negotiate. So that, that's typically left up to the producers though, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, that's that's as much as I know as far as like how, um, how standardized those kind of deals are. It's like, you guys figure it out because the label's like, yo, I don't, I'm not figuring that out for you. you. That's all on you guys. You guys figure out how you want to do the splits and that's in your court. And if it goes to court, that's on your, <laughs> that's your deal. You guys are suing each other, not us. It has nothing to do with us. Well, yeah, I mean, you get to, you, you, once the record is done, even in its demo stage, you say, all right, 50, 50. All right, cool. You know, and then mm-hmm. you sign the split sheets there, or you right. email thread it or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that's usually negotiated. I mean, it should be negotiated right. at that point. If it's to the point where like the record is about to come out right. and then you guys are talking about it, you're a little too late. Yeah. I mean, you still do it, but right. it's like you guys should have talked about that a long time ago. Yeah, then you get into yeah. arguments like, wait, right. but I did the whole hook and, you know, and then yeah. you like start debating Cause it's what different. you did. Yeah. It's different when no it's a placement. Yeah. 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 Like, How many times have you gone down that I thought I wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's what, well, that's what happens. It's like, wait, who did who did the song We were really high. Like, I, don't, yeah. I don't even remember making this song, dude. Yeah. You know? Wait, we got a placement with that. Sounds that sounds like, that Wait, sounds like a hook that I was <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 60% me, 40% you, right? That's cool, like, right? Oh, no, that's no. not what happened right. here. You know? See, oh, and then whoever the makes the placement happen to. Like, <laughs> right, right. And then they all said they want a big cut. Yeah, so yeah. I should get more percentage. It's Facts. like, okay. How much, uh, what percentage do you think a loop maker should get? A loop maker? So, yeah, that's, that's, so, that's like, always someone, a good question. Like, there that's are producers debate. now that they just make loops. They just make loops. <laughs> yeah. And they're very <laughs> successful, yeah. you know, and they, yeah, they get on Travis Scott albums. And they get production credit, <laughs> yeah. you know, just by passing around loops. So, so, did, they, did they get the credit? Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I don't know. How much should they get? Like, you, opinion? It's my so opinion, yeah, they should yeah. get half. Okay. That's that's my opinion. So Obviously, 25%. If we're, if we're going in the technicals, like I think when you create a copyright, you can only really copyright melody. So if they created the melody, then mm. like that's obviously the most important part. So. Right. That's just changed though so much over yeah. the years. Yeah. yeah. But that's, again, that's negotiable. Well, if they right. created the melody and then you like <laughs> put it in a Fectrix and made a new melody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Whatever, like, that's like, a, rearranged that's their the melody. Thing. And I wouldn't say 50% because it, it's like, what if it's just used for a certain piece of the, right. of the record, not yeah. the whole mm. record? I mean... Like I said, it just depends on like what you think is fair yeah. for what you've contributed to the song. It probably has a lot to do with clout though too. It's like how oh, big yeah. are you? You know, like if it's going on a Travis record, I've gotten less than fifty percent on a song where I just I was the only where you did song. literally everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that happens. It just depends on like how big the artist is. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You had to give up something because sometimes the, yeah. sometimes the sometimes the artist didn't yeah. write the song. Yeah. yeah. So then the ra- songwriters yeah. want their piece, but then if the artist is big enough. They're still gonna get a piece of the writing. Absolutely. I had to tell a young yeah, songwriter. Yeah, that's a good point. A yeah, young good. songwriter wrote the song, and then it was two major artists that got on the song, 
and he got the smallest percentage even though he's he wrote the complete song so yeah. um but it just happens like that because they're you know obviously the idea is they bring you know the audience to the song which sells it anyways so therefore they should get the marketing percentage. the label the yeah. whole business yeah i think it's it's absolutely fair and and you have to be on both sides of the glass to understand that you know yeah. if you're a producer in your bedroom you're never going to understand that you're going to be like i made that that was me I should get all the money. It's like then you go. Ha- you have to go make all that money. Right. Like, you go you ahead, bro. Ten percent. Best of all, dude. Yeah. Ten yeah. percent of a beat, little then. or zero percent of a lot. You, yeah. you yeah. choose. One hundred percent of nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. That's, it's a hard thing, though. You know, like it's a hard thing to uh, break that down into. Hey, what if you're the guy that designed, you know, the fucking iPhone, and you're part of the design team? Do you deserve all the money from the iPhone? Like. It's crazy, like, but, you know, in the artistry world, we get really attached, we get emotional, we're like, but I made that. That's your baby. Yeah, but that's but, but is it, it's a you business know? first, and yes. I think that's what a lot of people forget, a lot of creatives forget, mm-hmm. or someone who hasn't had a lot of experience in the industry, it's the music business. Yeah. So, unless you understand that, then maybe, maybe this isn't the business for you, maybe right. you just want to be a hobbyist yeah just make music and just make music it. in your bedroom yeah. and that's fine you'll have a great life doing that you, yeah, facts. Oh, you might actually love 100 <laughs> percent of everything you make yeah. Yeah. 100%, yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> i'm chilling <laughs> yeah. no uh what i was gonna say yeah like the whole thing with uh percentages it, it's super funny i think um a lot of a lot of creatives don't understand what it takes especially on big records like how much money is spent on marketing you know what I mean? They don't understand, like, the, yeah, that's why you're getting, like, a point on the master. You yeah. know what I mean? Or this or that, because, like, it the the amount of people that are involved, too, mm-hmm. to, on a marketing level or label level to ship out a huge record, it's a lot, so. That's why it's good to educate yourself. You know, if you want to be in this business professionally, like, you could be a creative all day, but you have to educate yourself. Get a manager. If you don't know, get a manager that knows. Mm-hmm. Get a manager that has some clout yeah. so that you can learn from them. Right. and Or integrity, I should say. That's yeah. so that you can learn from them. Because not every manager is a good manager. Yeah, else. <laughs> For real. Not every manager is a manager. Yeah. Not every manager is a manager. Especially not in LA. <laughs> yeah, for like, real. I'm a manager. What? Make what sure you, you know you're getting with some credible or notable people that mm-hmm. you can learn from and learn the business from. Because in the beginning, yeah, you are going to have to give up a little, a little something. Mm-hmm. You know, until you get established. Once you get established, you have more leverage and more yeah. negotiating power. You can get more percentage at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like these artists, like going back to the artist mentality, is like they hang out with other artists at their level and other artists at their level who may not be as educated or, you know, mm-hmm. going crazy with the money that they got. You yeah, know, and they want to mm-hmm. keep up. Flying out, you know, everywhere, flying out everybody, yeah. all their friends <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. So it's it's like uh, education is like the one thing that like it's it's like a major key to longevity in, in the game. It's like. Who, who would have thought your your longevity in the game partially has to do with your finances and how you manage them? Right. You know what I mean? And having a good team, having the right team that's going to be able to guide you in the mm-hmm. right direction with that. Because, yeah. oh, like I said, there's a lot of good managers and mm-hmm. there's a lot of not so good managers out there, you know? Yep. Or people on your team that's trying to tap into that piece of the pie that mm-hmm. don't deserve yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a hard place to be. I think, uh, I think with anything, like if. Um, you know, when there's money involved and you're trying to make a career and you've been kind of like going this far in your music career off favors, you know, your homie's beats, your homie's room that he recorded you at, and then you're like, I want to level up because, you know, that's what, what you hear a lot is like, yeah, I'm trying to level up, I'm trying to get that distro deal, that that publishing deal, that check, you know? And it's like, I mean, I highly recommend like, borrowing money from friends and family first you know getting a credit card that you can charge up that like you could just pay back a credit card because <laughs> yeah. like labels not like you just said labels gonna you're gonna be a write-off for them yeah and you could totally do it yourself but you just gotta have the finances to do it i mean get kickstarter with a, get with an investor go fund crowdfunding me. there's like a million ways to do it i just think like it, it almost became a lazy mentality of like i gotta go get a deal mm-hmm for why why you know like where does that mentality come from it's almost like an ego gratification thing yeah. i got signed yeah. yeah 
Like it's just not that anymore. We're in 2019. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're signed or not. Nobody cares. No Nobody even cares. knows. No one even knows yeah. really. They just put the music know. out. Just do yeah. good music and put it out. And don't worry about the labels mm. so much. Not record labels, but like the labels, labels of right. having a title of like I'm a signed I'm artist signed. or <laughs> I'm a you published know. artist. That's like, that's great. Let's hear the music facts. and let the audience determine whether you're going to be successful or not. Because if you do sign with a label, yeah, it's faster. Mm. It could be faster, right? If you've are, be, if yeah. you're already popping, right. it could totally be faster. Right. You know, I you know, um I, we all know about the Cardi B deal, yeah, yeah. right? But she was already popping. Yeah. Like she had millions of followers before she they offered her. She already had the attention. Yeah, she had the attention yeah. already before that deal was offered to her. Yes. If you're yeah. starting from scratch, no leverage. You, you're no gonna get a one's going to give you that amount of money no. just right off the gate. You, mm. They may sign you, but mm. they might put you on the shelf for a little while, right. put you on the back burner. Third string. <laughs> yeah, and I do know some artists that get deals and never come out. Mm-hmm. Right. That That is the... That's devastating. But I, I literally equate it to most artists out. Like, when I'm having this conversation, I'm like, yo, this is fucking Shark Tank. Like, it's any business. Like, you haven't built a business. How much money are you making right now with your music? They're like, oh, dude, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Like, you don't even know how much money you're making right now. Mm. Why are you looking for investors? Why are you trying to get a deal signed? Why are you trying to make any deal? You don't have anything to offer. Yeah, your leverage is zero, so the deal is not going to be good if they want to even offer you a deal. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, I think that the biggest thing and like that's a poignant thing right there is like that the label will go for you and give you something that you got to pay back just so they can get a tax write off and you can get shelved so they can actually work against you. Yeah, which that part is like just. I mean, Especially I if you're competing, think about that. if you're competing with their artists too, yeah. like you're fucked. Yeah. You're, you're literally shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. You're ruining your business before it starts. They don't know that though. They just see that check up front, and they're just like, "Well, this is what they're about to give me, and I'm about to be rich." Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't care what nobody's saying right now. I ain't never seen this kind of money right. before in my life, and it's like, be careful. That's you hard. Know? That's the same thing as getting sure you a, a your first lawyer. credit card, you know? Yeah. And, and they give you a $5,000 line of credit, and it's 24.4% APR. <laughs> yeah, people think that that just because a credit card company gives you five grand means that you have five grand to spend. Yeah, yeah. No, there's this thing called utilization. You should be spending 30% or less on right. that credit card. Yeah, build the credit. Build the credit up. They're going to look at the history of it. If you're staying under that 30%, there's a good chance that they'll increase it yeah. and then you can spend a little more. Right. But don't max the card out. <laughs> don't have a... I got 5K. Don't have a payment that you that rolls over from month to month to month because right. that also doesn't look good either for your yeah. credit score. So these, I mean, this is really good stuff. Like I'm actually like going to have know, to go back on I know some on artists this. that maxed out the credit card on releases, oh, yeah. but they were they were rolling the dice and it worked for them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know a specific artist, but yeah. That's very much a gamble if right there. If you got it to pay at the end of the month, mm-hmm. if that credit card, if you max it out five grand, you better have that five right. grand to pay off. I remember hearing, didn't like Kevin Smith, the film director, I, I heard a story that he like did that movie Clerks with credit cards. Oh, dude, yeah, I want to. I want to doubt like, that at that, all. I it paid off all. in that case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it worked. Yeah, that's a gamble, you know. Yeah. Like that's like any business. You start it up and you're like pulling money out of your pocket. And don't do that, though, guys. It's a yeah, risk. For real. It's, it's a, a risk. risk. No, take a risk if you yeah. know how to take a risk. Yeah. yeah. If you're just taking a risk just to take a risk, and you're, you're take gonna, a risk when the bills. bets yeah. like when it looks like it's going to be in your favor, Facts. and there's already things set up in place that confirm that. Yes. Yeah. That's that's my biggest thing. It's like you don't have any proof. Like if you don't have any proof, why are you taking all this money? Like you don't have any big records, you don't have any big projects, you don't have anything yeah. going, like nobody knows you. Like, like do and, you already have a fan base? If you right. already have a fan base, then I would take that gamble. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't, you have like one follower. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. you might wanna <laughs> you might wanna think about it. Yeah. Like don't just do it for the ego for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh that's really interesting because I don't think a lot of people in general think about music as a business as as much as like you know us in a studio in a room where we all do music for a living and and make business but you know most people kind of look at it as like music it's just the thing it's like you know it's for enjoyment it's entertainment it's what i listen to my friend does music or they don't think of it as like yo you gotta like finances uh funding yeah. uh, llc budgets. incorporating budgets taxes they don't think <laughs> of it as an actual business 
And I think like if if you do go from it at an angle is you start with that. You start with business structure, business 101, economics, etc. Mm-hmm. Then you can kind of like not worry about that stuff as you create the art. You know, there's kind of a fear of talking about business within the uh, artist yeah. realm. Artists hate talking about business, Facts. you know what I mean, and they'll defer it completely to someone else, like a manager. That's why they or get screwed over so much. That is true. Like you yeah. do have to know something about it. If you just give it all to your manager or a lawyer, mm. good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good especially luck. the That's labels scary. lawyer. Oh yeah, get your own lawyer. That is so. That's the best. Key. Get your own lawyer. We'll just we'll, we'll say yeah, but the lawyer. Get your own lawyer. Do yeah. your own due diligence. Find a good lawyer. Find a good manager. Yeah. Someone that you can trust. Start building those relationships now. Yeah. Because you might see some things in their character, like you're like, oh, okay, maybe I can't trust you. With yeah, money. this is maybe a, not a good idea. I'm gonna go over here. here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and also understand that this is a long game. Yes. This is so long term. People just because like our industry, that's what we do. It's the entertainment industry, so everything's like overhyped. Yeah, it's like oh, I, I want, I want the chains, All I want the cars, I want like the girls, instant, I want, I want this, that, and the third. And it's big like hits, big bags. But let's think long term. Like you want like longevity. You want your finances yeah. to be, you know, in order long term. You mm-hmm. want a career yeah. long term, right? Mm-hmm. Or do you want just one hit wonder today, yeah. here today, going tomorrow kind of a situation? Mm-hmm. The best uh, marketing I could I could say that I've seen in a very long time was um, speaking about Dave Pensato and um, Jason Joshua doing their Mix with the Masters uh, course thing. Uh, in this little thing, in the copy, uh, Dave was saying, you know, mixing is a lifestyle. And I think if everybody looked at the music business and music as a lifestyle, like the actual combination of music business, music industry... This is a lifestyle. This isn't like, yo, I fuck with music or like I mess with doing some music as business or putting out records. This is like, I mean, you know, like the guys and girls that do it and that get in the studio every day, they do this for real. This is part of your life. It, it is. It's your whole life. It's your whole yeah. goddamn life. And, and you know, everything else, are they're like the pieces that are involved in your life. But music is your real life. And That's it takes your music time. Business. Like how long did it take for you? Or you... He's he's special because he I I feel like in his situation he got on like really quickly. Yeah, it's because like, he's, he's quiet. He listens. Well, well that that's part of it. But yeah. that's because he's amazing at what he does. Right. Right. That so helps. if if <laughs> like I, I I don't know him to do any half ass work. Right. But how long did it take for you like from the the moment that you graduated school to get your first like big record? Um. Well, I was assisting on things pretty quickly, but I was uh, like I was full time with Trey Songs, major major artist within uh, two years of moving to Atlanta, which is fast. That's really but fast. That's mm-hmm. super fast, and it's pretty hard to replicate that. And honestly, I would never take it back. But mm. there are some t- advantages to not doing that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, and also, I was still like I. I I wouldn't consider that the point at which I like made it, you know. We never will feel like we yeah. made it. I mean, I don't think. it was definitely it was years after that when when I was like finally to the point where I can turn certain things down or like, mm. you know. I mean, when I was full time with him, the rent was paid, you know. It was right. like, but I still wasn't. I couldn't have like supported a family right. or anything. Right. I was brand new engineer, like two year engineer can't ask for ten grand a month. Right. You know? Facts. So my rate wasn't the highest ever. Mm. And you always have that in the back of your head. Yeah. I'm not worth that much. I guess I'll just deal with this. Yeah. So you know, and and I wasn't really educated. I didn't know how to ask for more. I didn't want to ask for more. Right. You know, because I didn't think my background really Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's like so fast. I felt I felt like I was making okay money at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, but I would say like it was. Let me see. Yeah, it was like probably seven years before mm-hmm. I really felt like okay. I actually do this. Yeah, <laughs> for a living. That's a pretty. You know, good I had point. platinum songs and all that like before yeah. then. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, that's that's a trip, right? Yeah. Like those those uh, moments when you don't really think about it because you were just like thrown into it. 
I mean, my my story is similar to yours. You know, it's like I worked on huge movies, like billion dollar grossing movies, mm-hmm. and uh, credits on those movies, and and getting in sessions and doing this stuff, and then going, holy shit, I have a platinum record on a movie, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, fuck, like this is doing a lot of money, and like people think this is a big deal, yeah. but it's like you don't like when you're it's three years in, you know? Yeah, you're still like, but am I working today? Is yeah, the but question. <laughs> How like, much do I get the, per hour? You yeah. know, like, can I get a raise, please? Yeah. <laughs> But then I think like the seven to 10 year period really like if you're really cooking though, you know, like you have to be in it, like you're in the industry, you're working 50 to 80 hours a week and you're really doing it. Uh, Yeah. Seven, 10 years in, you're like, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing now. (laughs) Right. You stop feeling like a, like, um, what is that? Imposter syndrome. I mean, I still kind of feel that. Yeah, totally. Like, but. I will say just to plug the webinar one more time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to be covering things that you can do to speed that process up and, nice. you know, um, get to the point where you do have a career working with high profile artists on a Super regular basis. Uh, so, yeah, tune into the webinar. Yeah. Dope. Love it. When You guys got to get a date together. Yeah. It's you just got to set it. Very soon. Yeah. Like, just set just, it, make it happen. Yeah. Just yeah. set it and make sure we set it like right now. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys like, can't take that pressure. No. You got shit to do. You gave me that look like, don't no. push it. No, but like within like the next week, I think we'll have a date. Yeah, we'll have a date yeah. next week for sure. Yeah, I think I think that's really exciting. That's that's some cool stuff. And the webinar thing is a great idea. I mean, uh, I've thought about doing doing webinars for the longest time and uh, we might have to copy you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we all as do. As long as the information is practical, that's you know, right. that people can actually get has value to be from. Um, you know, I just feel like what he has to offer, like a right. lot of people aren't telling this side of it. Right. They're not telling the behind the scenes. They're yeah. not talking about the business. They're not talking mm-hmm. about what it really takes. Facts. That journey. It's just all like, hey, just be a platinum engineer right out of school. Yeah. Three like, steps Whoa. to get. Hold know. on. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that. So. <laughs> The information that I mean that he's going to be talking about, I mean, it's more than valuable. Nice, more than valuable. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited, excited for it too. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds really cool. So uh, yeah, first of all, like and last of all, thanks so much for uh, for coming through. Really appreciate it. Thank thanks you, for having like, us. both of you. Uh, we got two for one today, so that was pretty rad. Yeah. You know, get the engineers in the house. Yeah. You got the business and the music, and uh, it's refreshing because it's like. That's, that's what we do all day. I talk about music and business. Yeah. 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 It is a blind. That's it's true. A that's why I was like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. time to get on some podcasts. Yeah. You guys got to get a we podcast. We can talk like forever. So. You should. <laughs> yeah. We highly recommend it. I mean, uh, once you get 62 episodes in, you realize like, oh shit, that's, you know, you start getting it going a little bit. But um, thanks so much for coming through. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, where where can everyone find you guys? Like, where can they reach out to you and, and spam you and and show you all their records? Do and, not nah. spam us. <laughs> DM. Slide in the DM. <laughs> this this, this is the DM. only thing they're going to see at the end, right? Yeah. right. They're like, oh. Uh, Instagram is the best way to reach me. Nice. So it's at Shante, S-H-A-N-T-E underscore official. Nice. You can find me on Instagram as well. At the real Zach Steele, C A C H S T E E L E. Superman mm-hmm. shit, dude. I know. Trademark that, right? Yeah. yeah. He's the real one. The He's real the real one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Not the fake one, dude. Not the fake one. And uh, you can catch uh, Kev at KDE Beats on IG. And Brad at Bradley HD. Yep. On MySpace, right, Kev? MySpace.com. Yeah, yeah. MySpace.com. And Tinder. Still got music up there. <laughs> no, and Tinder. <laughs> dude, come on, man. I'm not single, bro. You're going to fuck me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's going to watch like one of these podcasts. And and I don't think you can search on Tinder. Yeah, this I is think the, that's just a yeah. running joke, right? <laughs> no, I don't think you can. Yeah, yeah, you search. I'm like, yo, I found you on Tinder. <laughs> yeah. You got to really be Listen swiping. Listen my music. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Check out my hot mixtape. <laughs> just DMing people. Doesn't matter. We should talk about that next of like having a relationship in the music industry. Oof. Is it easy to maintain maintain or not? Yeah. Well is Tune it? in. Yeah. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.